Hi guys, welcome to Threads. Uh, this week we are really privileged to have uh, Ben Adams, who is a keyboard player and uh, physicist yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> I told you we're not a church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, we just we're just really glad to have him on. He he plays keys and um, I played with Ben. We played with Ben a few times and um, and I'll we'll have some of the footage on this video just showing uh, Ben playing and doing his thing. Uh, but also we'll we'll have a chat and just talk yeah. through his sounds and how he does his things and uh, hopefully you're going to learn something out of this video so yeah welcome to spread this is ben can never make fuss it's only god that can elevate us if one day you demand them bust don't get it confused the reason ain't us we put the work in late night lurking still pray can't nothing ain't certain man call me a town because i never laid down i can't sleep if the birds ain't chirping i'm all hours so, yeah tell us a bit about yourself like just yeah how i got into worship like how you go into worship music okay, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. so i started getting into worship music when i was um probably about 10, 11 really, but I guess I've always grown up around music. Uh, when I was about 12 or so, I used to stand at the back of church. I'll keep the short version, but I used to stand at the back of church with second keyboards. I wouldn't even come through the front of the house. They'd just uh, let me just play a bit and just, just play pads and uh, no one would even know I was playing them. But basically that was kind of my first introduction to kind of worship music really. And as time went on, I kind of practiced hard at home, just with limited gear I had available to me. Uh, it was a really old cool keyboard that uh, we don't have anymore at this uh, church and basically I just kind of learned on that and then I got my own keyboard I got a bit of money coming at one point in my life from a grant that I applied for and I bought a, a proper proper keyboard as a proper keyboard as it were and it was a cool M3 I think it was and I'd spent hours learning how to use it try and because the manual wasn't very good so I just tried to spend a long time trying to understand it so you went through a manual just yeah so I tried to read the manual but it wasn't very good and in terms of it didn't explain how to do stuff yeah and so building up the but just keep okay I don't understand this I'll just play around with it I'll see if anyone's got anything on YouTube See if I know anyone who knows you know anything about it. That's good. That kind of thing. forward you know 10 years or so over those 10 years I've kind of learned to uh, improve myself as a musician just from working with people and also not just working with people in you know worship team but also privately spending a lot of time working on improving sounds listening to what other people have already produced and then trying to think oh I like that I'll take that I like that I'll take that sound they've made and then I'll tweak it um, and I've had the privilege of being involved with great musicians like Oscar you know, and involved in stuff like Limitless and New Wine in my past as well and stuff like that really so that's yeah. me really um, I'm also a physicist in the part time yeah, <laughs> amazing. Uh, which kind of helps with music as well as yeah well. cool so uh, tell us a bit about your sound like how did yeah. you get to a point where you're able to create 
your sounds and you're going to show us some of yeah, them in a of bit but how did you how how do you how are you able to craft those sounds i think like so many things in life it ultimately comes down to practice but i won't just end it there because yeah, <laughs> yeah. that'd be a rubbish video wouldn't it yeah. but i think the way you practice is what i'll talk about um i think when you first start out with a keyboard you don't necessarily need to buy the most expensive top of the range bring all the best synths sounds and all the best plugins and everything like that because there's a lot of ways you can really develop. If you've already started out with the best possible gear, you might not know how to use it for a start. And I think that's a lot more harmful to you as a musician developing than having something a lot simpler. You can kind of take a few steps towards really understanding it. So if I've got a piece of equipment and I understand 90% of what it can do, in my opinion, I found that to be much better than having like a Nord, for example, and barely knowing how to turn the thing on. Yeah. And you know, um, as, as beautiful as some of the sounds you can get out of that, or some of the synths you can produce in main stage with some of the expensive plugins you can buy, as great as they sound, for someone just starting out, that can be quite intimidating. So I'd say just buy a you know, lower, cheaper end kind of synth and just spend a lot of time investing in that. And by what, what I mean by investing in that, there's obviously the technical side of things, but as you touched on sound design, uh, I think the way to improve as a sound designer, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, uh, some great people out there who produce some stuff already. Um, I like to listen to the tracks as they are complete, you know, all the parts in, and then I like to listen to the individual uh, keys parts, or obviously for myself, but if you have instruments, um, you can listen to those stems and try and work out what they've done. Yeah. Um, and over time, you train your ears to work out, oh, I recognise that sound. And you think, oh, I've got one like that before. And then over time, you build up like a portfolio of different sounds. Yeah. And the ability to be able to tweak them to um, your liking or what you think the song needs or yeah. what the worship leader might want in a particular moment. Yeah. So stuff like that really. I think that's how I describe it really. Great. Yeah, much stuff. Great. Thanks Ben. Thank no, you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, we're at a conference actually playing at a conference and so that's why you can hear the loud music in the background. <laughs> uh, but we've just taken a chance to just talk yeah. about this and I thought it's important just to, to get to know people and to share yeah. and knowledge and to share what we what we all do as musicians. So yeah. I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, take time, like this video, share it, and let's let's spread the word um, for Threads and spread the word for um, for what we do here. Yeah, thank you so much. See you later. So this is the key setup I use regularly at church. Um, I'll just talk you through some of the different elements of it, and I'll then just play a little bit of some stuff and some well some of the worship songs we're doing today. Um, just to give you an idea of how I run things. But first I'll just start with what this is. This is a controller keyboard. Um, it's the Yamaha CP and basically I don't use any of the sounds from this thing but it's a really good controller as I say. So the way I set that up, I just, just I might as well show you in detail is I have this device here which is a USB MIDI. I've taped over it to hold it in place but it's basically a um, USB MIDI device that lets me connect multiple outputs because I actually need three USBs and a MacBook only has two. So it just enables me to have more. And so I connect that, there's cables that run under here and then it goes into the back of um, the Yamaha just here, the USB output. And then that lets me, I'll just show you, assign like an on-screen key bed. It lets me, so like I'm pressing the D key here and you can see that it's assigned properly. And then you can do the same for the foot pedal down here, just down there, for example, so I'm, I'm doing that. But then also on screen you can sing with the little yellow bit there. Uh, and then there's also what's called the mod wheel. And so when you program, uh, a lot of your features you want to put on a single controller because it makes life a lot easier for you. So there's this on-screen con you know, controller here. So when I move that, if you, when I'm moving that, if you come in here, I'll just, get, you just look on screen, you can see down the bottom of here, that responds. And then that controller becomes really useful because you can do a lot of the programming inside main stage such that it enables you to control the levels of all the sounds in terms of their frequency, their volume, different effects on them. So you can take a song from just really low down in the verse all the way up in energy and stuff like that really. So that's the kind of functionality side of things. Um, so that's how we play the actual how we get the audio from here all the way to the back. So here we have one of these which is an audio interface and basically I'll go into main stage preferences, audio, uh, connect this in using a USB. So this USB here goes all the way around into the back of the interface and then there's two jack cables through here 
I believe they go into a DI box somewhere. We won't try and track that down. Yeah. They go into a DI box and then they get mixed at the back. Um, so that's how that works really, uh, which is great. There's also this controller here. So you probably wonder maybe, or maybe you wonder what I'm looking at on screen when I'm playing. And basically it's a visual representation of what I've got in front of me uh, as best as possible. So these little eight faders they're called, and then the eight knobs up here, um, basically allow me to control the different parameters of the sounds. You'll notice a lot of them I haven't actually used, because on a simple sound like Let Go, for example, where we run much of it to track, there's only really a few levels I need to be concerned with. And so if I move these faders here, they let me control the levels on screen once again. So I really recommend this controller. Uh, a lot of people use it. It's the Korg Nano Control 2. Uh, it's a really good piece of kit. So now I'll just talk through, maybe you just pick one song and I'll just kind of show you some of the kind of stuff that I do. So I'll take you say I am because I've done quite a lot of programming on that, for example. No, I do have come to the altar. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of something I got loaded up. Yeah. Cool. So we'll go for that. So if I go full screen now, let's make sure the audio is recording. So I've kind of got the um put myself in. I've kind of got the um Just to give you an idea, and by moving this all the way up, I'll show you some of the programming I've done in a second, but you can go really big, so go... What some of these layers are doing, um, as you can see here, uh, each one of these is what's called a channel strip. And each one of these is an individual instrument or something of that sort. It can be sample based. Uh, and you see here I've got piano. Basically, they are quite like to color code, really. So each thing, um, most of the time, the colors you see here match what I see on screen. It just helps me when I'm playing live. And then I've got pa violin, pads, sub bass. I, I mean, that's just to kind of give a bit of body cellos, bells. Uh, the bell is like a tubular bell, so when I push the mod wheel, which you talked about earlier, all the way up, you'll find that that really comes through in the mix and just adds a lot of like top end, just kind of adds a bit of shimmer to it. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got the leads as well. Uh, you might have noticed during the chorus, um, I had a kind of brassier sound, and that was when I had the mod wheel at like halfway. But when I push it all the way to the top, you find that the stringy lead kind of takes over. So yeah. I can kind of, I find that by using this single controller, it provides me with so much flexibility for what I can do live, really. So that was just kind of a bit of an overview of the gear, really. Um, any, any questions? I'm sure I'll still have to answer them. Thank you. No worries, through that now I'm in the light, it's calm. Let them ring the alarm, it's calm. Let them bring through the arms, it's calm. I don't understand how you are, it's calm. Tell a man chill, let me spark this song. Trust me, I've been through dramas, but ain't no man taking me off this path. Oceans thrown in my way, will part. Moses flow when he raised this staff. Bros on the road said he raped this dog. Holes in my clothes, I ain't A-list dog. Still man serving amazing God. Hope they know who I made this for.